Well, good evening and welcome to the September 22nd, 2020 meeting of the Pequannock Town Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the Township Clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with Township policy. Information on remote access to the meeting was sent via email to the Suburban Trends, Daily Record, and Record newspapers and posted on the Township's website. Thank you. Now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. Aye. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United, United States, States, States of America. America. And, America. and to, to the Republic, Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation, one nation. nation. Under God, under God, indivisible, indivisible. liberty, liberty for, all. Just for all. Most gracious providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. 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 All righty. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mrs. Russell? Here. Mayor Hurd? I am officially here. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, for anyone who hasn't participated in one of our remote meetings, I'm going to ask Mr. Brewer to review the format of the meeting. Mr. Brewer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, in, as a result of the ongoing pandemic, the council has elected to hold their meetings virtually for the time being. Uh, as such, anyone who wishes to participate during any of the public portions which are identified on the agenda, or should the mayor call for the meeting to be open to the public, may do so either by raising their hand or noting that they would like to comment within the chat function of uh, the Zoom software. Once that happens, I think we will be recognized, allowed to participate, and uh, move on from there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. All right, moving on to presentations. We do have one, and it's a proclamation. I knew I was going to mess this up. Proclamation of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. As we all know, you know, childhood is hard enough as it is, but then when we hear about childhood cancer, that really is uh, something that weighs very heavy on our heart. Uh, so we wanted to read this proclamation uh, because this month is. Uh, Child Cancer Awareness Month. So let's see if I can do this right. <laughs> whereas childhood cancer is a leading cause of death by disease in children, and whereas one in 285 children in the United States will be diagnosed by their 20th birthday, and whereas 43 children per day, or 15,780 children, are diagnosed with cancer annually in the U.S., and whereas there are approximately 40,000 children on active treatment at any given time. And whereas the average age of diagnosis is six years old, compared to 66 years for adults cancers diagnosis. And whereas 80% of childhood cancer patients are diagnosed late and with metastatic disease. And whereas on average, there's, a, there's been a point 6% increase in incidence per year since the mid 70s, resulting in an overall incidence increase of 24% over the last 40 years. And whereas two thirds childhood cancer patients will have chronic health conditions as a, re as a result of their treatment toxicity, with one quarter being classified as severe to life threatening. And whereas approximately one half of childhood cancer families rate the associate financial toxicity due to out-of-pocket expenses as considerable to severe. And whereas in the last 20 years, only four new drugs have been approved by the FDA to specifically treat childhood cancer. And whereas the National Cancer Institute recognizes the unique research needs of childhood cancer and the associated need for increasing funding to carry this out. Whereas hundreds of nonprofit organizations at the local and national level, including the American Childhood Cancer Organization, are helping children with cancer and their families cope through educational, emotional, and financial support. 
and whereas research and healthcare professionals work diligently dedicating their expertise to treat and cure children with cancer, and whereas too many children are affected by this deadly disease, and more must be done to raise awareness and find a cure. Now, therefore, Mayor Ryan Hurd and the members of Pequannock Township Council do hereby proclaim September 2020 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Pequannock Township, and encourage all residents to observe Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and support this cause that so deeply impacts family in every community across our country. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Carol, for preparing this as well. It's a lot of very interesting information there. Uh, cancer is a bad thing, and I think it's even worse when it hits, you know, our young, our young ones, our children. Okay, so Mr. Brewer, we're going to go on to reports from volunteers at this time. All right. If there are any reports or comments from any of the volunteers serving our community, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized. Mr. Burr. Mr. Mayor, there are no hands raised. Okay, thank you, sir. So we will move on to public comment. The next item on the agenda, public comments, this public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period for public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please raise your hand, wait to be recognized, and provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Burr. Mr. Mayor, there are no hands raised. All right, well, there will be another area for this later on if anybody has a question. At this, well, we have not reached 30. Next on the agenda is the manager's report. So back to Mr. Burr. Thank you, sir. A couple, uh, or actually a few things uh, on my written report for the council. The first is there's a, a resolution on for the council's consideration later this evening to join the North Jersey Municipal Employee Benefits Funds Wellness Program. As the council's aware, we transitioned into a health insurance fund or a HIF in January of 2020 um, with our membership uh, this year, we are looking to increase our participation in the programs that are offered by uh, joining the wellness program. Um, generally, the wellness program includes a lot of different activities. Some are mandatory things like physicals, uh, certain screenings, other things are participation in uh, walks, runs, uh, things like that. Uh, an employee, the benefit to the employee is, you know, obviously better health. Uh, the benefit to the township and the fund is less claims. So hopefully it's one of those rare situations where everyone can win. There are incentives, and I just want to highlight those for the township council's understanding. In year one, uh, all uh, people who participate are given a Fitbit uh, free of charge that the fund pays for, and $150 gift cards in gift cards that, again, the fund pays for. In year two and thereafter, if you successfully complete all of the identified objectives, the fund pays $250 and the township is, would pledge an additional $250. So the employee in years two and thereafter would be eligible for up to $500 of benefit uh, for completing all the necessary challenges. This has been in existence for a long time with the NJMEBF. Some towns have done really amazing things. Other towns have participated and done pretty well. Uh, if the council sees fit to participate, it's something that we hope to do really well with to not only benefit the, the township, but the fund as a whole and the staff. Uh, next item on my report uh, within the, again, agen agenda, the council has for their consideration a resolution authorizing the use of the township rights of way by Planet Networks Incorporated. Uh, it was a rather timely piece of mail that we received with all the discussion about our internet and cable service. Uh, that there is a small company uh, that's located in Newton, New Jersey, that is looking for permission to be granted to use the township's right of way, rights of way to deploy fiber optic cable. As we've discussed, you know, we have one regulated utility, there is no competition. Uh, another service that was supposed to build out the state didn't, so residents are beholden to only one real source of internet. Um, now we have an opportunity, should the council see fit to grant the uh, the use of the rights of way that there could be competition. 
Uh, noted in my report, I did have an opportunity to speak with the, the Chief Executive Officer of Planet Networks. They're hoping to build out if we, they receive approval in the next 12 to 24 months. And lastly, uh, just to highlight, the 2020 FEMA Home Elevation Grant Cycle is now come back out again. Uh, we're expecting the grant application to formally be announced on September 30th with a due date of November 30th. Uh, for the Council and the public's awareness, the Township received grants to elevate homes in 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2019. Uh, we're hoping for number five and um, just want to make sure people understand that the, the Township is undertaking that process. Those individuals who are homeowners that have eligible homes have been contacted and interested parties will be invited to a meeting uh, which will happen in a few different formats depending on people's familiarity and comfort level with technology. But other than those three items, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Burr. Um, two quick questions. The wellness program, I think that's great. Are we considered employees? Would we be able so to? The, the, the definition of employees for the benefit of the wellness program is eligible to receive health benefits. Ah. Uh, we can still be healthy, right, Dave? So, everybody else uh, out there walking and everything. So. And anybody who would might want to participate through their own use of technology and maybe not receive the, the, the incentives, I don't think it would be bad if anyone on council did want to participate uh, in, in that way. But I don't think the incentives could be included. So Definitely. we'll be included in on some of the uh, things that they're going to be doing? Correct. We're going to promote everything for, for lots of people because... You know, as we all know, going through everything we've dealt with for the past many, many months, you know, sedentary lifestyles are one of the worst things for you. So getting people moving and getting making sure you have the necessary checks by doctors and everything else can really prevent tragedy. So I think it's a great idea. So I, I would absolutely be for it. Thank you. Excellent. And then the second one, Planet Networks. So if they're asking us for the right of way, we're allowing them to be in the right of way, but they still have to clear it with the people that own the polls, right? Correct. So the rights of way are under the authority of, of the municipal government, but the polls uh, in the township of Aquanic are typically owned by Jersey Central. Run, once in a while, you're running to one that's owned by Verizon. Um, they would have to secure the necessary approvals to locate on the polls. This is simply a request of the township council to grant them access to use the rights of way. Got it. Okay. I, I think that's questions? a win-win too. Yeah. yeah. Even if it just scares cable vision <laughs> that somebody else is coming in. Nothing wrong with a little competition. Between yes, absolutely. And that was just 100%. coincidence and time timely, as you said, that it so happened now that. I, I contemplated trying to put on a superhero cape and do a big <laughs> laugh and say, here, look what we've brought the people with everything that's going on. But it would have been very disingenuous. It really was just great timing. And, wow. you know, to have the CEO's cell phone number is a different relationship than we have with these other utilities. Yeah. So I, I hope it is as positive um, as, as it may be. You know, it could be a great thing. Yeah, and it's a Jersey great. company. Correct. Even so it's local. I like that. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So moving on, uh, there are no public hearings. Uh, next on the agenda is introduction of ordinances. Mrs. Marsh. Uh, Mrs. Marsh, you are muted. <laughs> Someday I'll get that right. For the council's consideration this evening is ordinance number 2020-10, which is an ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the township of Aquanic in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, and appropriating the sum of $398,200 for financing thereof. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brewer, any comments? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just by way of orientation, uh, as the council is aware, and just for the public's benefit, um, the township has a, a fully funded general capital budget in cash. Uh, however, although that appropriation is included in the budget when it's adopted, the mechanism to provide the appropriation to make the funding av to available to spend is through an ordinance. Uh, earlier this year, we authorized 508,800, you authorized 508,800 dollars uh, of that 1.5. And the strategy was with everything going on associated with COVID and the impacted restrictions on business and other revenues, we didn't want to have a situation where we were in trouble financially. So the idea was to try to hold back and not authorize everything as we normally would in an effort to try to project what impacts the, uh, the, the, 
the pandemic has had on our, our, our finances. So this is an additional $398,200. So the total appropriation, if this is ultimately adopted, would be $907,000, leaving about half a million dollars on the table still if the cancellation of appropriations to keep the balance in budget becomes necessary toward the end of the year. Earlier, when we were going through the budget process, I was projecting roughly 400,000 of lost revenues uh, based on you know, a, a lot of best professional estimate, read gut guessing. Uh, we've, we've narrowed that down a little bit. We think you know, quarter million, 200,000 is maybe a more realistic figure at this point. So we're keeping a close eye on things as we move forward. But based on the, that fact and knowing we're still leaving 500 on the table, um, we thought it would be important to move forward with some of the projects that are identified. Even if they can't be completed in 2020, they can be done first thing in 21. So we're being responsible and we're slowly rolling out the funds, but we're holding back just to see what happens. And now we're feeling a little bit better that we can spend a couple of bucks. Correct. Okay. And this is like the 398 and change of the 900 and some that you just... Correct. Yeah, 907,000 would be the total of both ordinances right. if this ordinance was ultimately introduced. Yep. Great. Thanks. Uh, any other comments from council? Okay. Is there a motion to introduce this ordinance on the first reading? I'll make a motion to introduce ordinance number 2020 10. I get second. a second. Thank you. Roll call, Mrs. Marsh. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mayor Hurd? Yes. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda item is resolutions. Mrs. Marsh. Beginning with resolution, beginning with resolution R2000, R202191, authorizing a veteran's exemption and write off of property taxes. 202192, authorizing tax office refunds, overpayments, or cancellations. 2021-93, authorizing release of deposits for construction in a township right-of-way. 2021-94, confirming the designated membership in the Paquonic Township Fire Department. And that is for Emily Adams, Zolt Victor Kovacs, and Nico DiMicino. R2021-95, approving the renewal of the designated alcoholic beverage control licenses, and that's for the remainder of all the licenses. Um, Authorizing the use of, I'm sorry, R2021-96, authorizing the use of the public rights of way by Planet Networks Incorporated. 2021-97, approving change order number one for the Kent Place Sewer Extension Project, increasing the contract with Mesrocola Excavating of Plainfield, New Jersey by $15,564 to a revised contract price of $106,744. R2020-198, Authorizing participation by the Township of Aquanic in the North Jersey Health Insurance Fund Employee, Employee Wellness Program. 2021-99, identifying areas of concern related to cable vision LTs and prescribing actions to benefit the Township of Aquanic. And R2020-200, approving payments of the itemized claims as set forth on the September, 9th, September 17th, 2020 bill. List. Thank you. Are there any comments on the resolutions from Council? Uh, just to clarify, R2020-191, authorizing a veteran's exemption and write off of property taxes. Is this something that we do every year? No, this is unique to this particular uh, veteran's exemption. What happens is under the state of New Jersey uh, real property tax laws, if you're declared to be a fully disabled veteran, you are, by, as a matter of entitlement, entitled to a real property tax exemption. But the year in which you are declared you would not be entitled to it. That only comes if the Township Council grants the exemption. So we, and in Bequanic, I, I did speak with the tax collector and we have a history of granting our veterans this exemption for the year in which it's granted. So what Excellent. happens is it takes the VA a little bit of time to catch up. So you apply and it takes about nine months to get declared. So that's what happened here. So we're refunding Excellent. the taxes from the date the VA determined he was disabled. Excellent, that is, that is excellent. I'm really happy to do that. And yeah, that's that. something through the VA. So if we did have um, a veteran in town that was disabled, they would have to apply through the VA and then the VA gets in touch with us? That's correct. They have to do, 
because there's other benefits other than yeah. you know our property tax exemption. So yeah, they have to be declared by the VA to be fully disabled. Then they come make an application to the tax collector and obviously have to show that they own property in town. They're the owners of the property. And if they meet that criteria, the exemption happens. And the council just gets to decide whether to refund for that brief period while they waited to get qualified by the FA, by the VA. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from council? We yeah, to... um, I'm sorry. Um, resolution 199, how far is that going to go, really? Hmm. So that's the okay. resolution pertaining to cable vision, correct? So correct. Yes. Yeah. we've been invited with some other towns to participate in some discussion uh, with some lobbyists who are lobbyists on behalf of, of Altice Cable Vision. Um, sent, uh, one of the state senator's offices involved. I, I think it's a good public statement if the council sees fit to adopt it. Um, it, it solidifies our position on certain things. Is it worth a lot of money or something significant mm -hmm. creates a dividend, uh, Councilman Phelan, no. You know, it's, it's, it is as in other ways we've done these resolutions, it's a state. I think we definitely have to put pressure on Cablevision to start changing their ways. But I think it's not gonna be really, uh, I agree we need to do this, but it's not gonna go that far in my opinion. Duly noted, you're probably I right. I think the Planet Networks is going to go a lot further <laughs> than this resolution is. <laughs> Giving people Both choice is time. always a powerful thing. Exactly. So we're putting Kale Vision on notice and we're welcoming, uh, what is it? The uh, Planet Networks. Planet, Planet Network. Networks into our town. All right. Any other questions? Seeing none. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make that motion to adopt resolution 2020-191 through 2020-200. I'll second. I'll second it. Excellent. Roll call. Florence Lynch. Yes. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Phelan. Yes. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mayor Hurd. Yes. All right. Moving on. There are no items for discussion. There are no reports and notices. So council reports. Next on the agenda is council reports and announcements. We're going to start with Councilwoman Florence Lynch. Okay. Just a couple of things. Uh, the planning board met. Uh, we had the public hearing for a minor subdivision on Elizabeth Ave. Um, no, no objections there. Um, that passed. Um, we approved the resolution for a minor subdivision extension for the Pompton Queen Diner. They just had an extension to perfect the deed that was in their um, right. Uh, so I think they have like six months. Uh, that's it on planning board. Economic Development Committee. Uh, they're meeting tomorrow night at 7.30. Um, I'm sorry, my phone went crazy. Um, Economic Development's meeting tomorrow night at 7.30. Uh, we have three grand openings this weekend. Um, you, must, you should have all gotten an email on that. We have the golf gas station, the beautiful golf gas station down by uh, our end of town. Uh, by by uh, Ryan and myself, that's in, down by the end of Park Ave on Newark Compton Turnpike. That's 403 Newark Compton Turnpike. That's going to be Friday at one o'clock for everyone that can go to that ribbon cutting. And then on Sunday at one o'clock, there'll be two side-by-side -side grand openings, one at the Salon Brucata, which is a hair salon. Um, and one is Pizza 23, which used to be AJ's Pizza. Um, just new owners changed the name to just Pizza 23. They're not part of AJ's. Um, that's, those are both Sunday at one. That's located at 615 Route 23 South in Pompton Plains. Then the only other thing I wanted to mention, um, great job by the town. Um, uh, for all they're doing with the elevation grants. I see there's a lot of improvements with uh, communications with the homeowners because as we go through the, these grants each year, we learn more and more and more, which, can, which perfects the process. Um, other than that, the only other thing I wanted to mention was some of us had attended the Morris County League of Municipalities meeting in Lake Capacon this past week. And uh, the guest speaker there was Megan Huncher, who's now the president and CEO of the County 
uh, Chamber of Commerce, and she gave a great economic overview uh, for Morris for all of Morris County. And if uh, we, I think we all got copied on the presentation. But if anyone wants the presentation and they don't have it, we can forward it to you, or maybe even put it on the website. I don't know if that's possible. But um, so that's it. That's all I have. Thank you, Melissa. I, were you able to forward that over to Jim Sardo for uh, Chamber of Commerce? We can do that. I just wanted to, yeah, we all got, I think, copied on it. I'll forward yeah. it to the Chamber. I thought maybe I'd forward it to EDC, the Economic Development great. Committee. And I don't know, is that something we could put on our website? That Would, would that be useful to anyone to say? Can we do that, Adam? Certainly. It'd, it'd be perfect to put up on the EDAC section of the Township's website, and we can do a little story of it on the front for a little while. And Okay. Perfect thing for people to be aware of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Councilman Cole. Uh, the first day squad had their first uh, in-person meeting uh, a week ago. This is a uh, week ago yesterday. Um, I had some uh, some information to share, uh, but I left that back in New Jersey. I think we lost uh, So I'm in Maine uh, right now. Um, and I missed last night's uh, planning board meeting. Linda told me that they had enough for the quorum and didn't need me to participate. So um, I will be returning to New Jersey tomorrow. And that's all I have. I'll, ha I'll share the uh, first aid squad stuff at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cole. And I'm glad that you'll be coming back to Jersey. <laughs> next is Councilman Phelan. I don't really have anything to report at this time, but I'm happy to see Dave coming back to New Jersey. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'd love to keep you back here too, Rich. All right, uh, Deputy Mayor Russell. I am very happy to announce that the <laughs> library is open for 25 people. And yes, yes. And that, that meeting was during the League of Municipalities uh, meeting that we were all at. And I got kind of loud and Melissa was like, <laughs> what were you doing to me again? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so but that was that was a great meeting and open it to 25 people trying to get, you know, back to where we need to go. Um, I also got a really nice letter from a um, member of our township, Mr. Corso. Um, he had been to one of our meetings last year or the year before, and we had all, you know, he was new to the area and we told him to go to PV Park and he just wanted to let us know that he's been there the last two years and he absolutely loved it. And he, you know, really thinks PV Park is a great place. So it was a really nice letter and I'll share it with everybody. Um, and that's all I have. Hey, Kyle, can you, quick question. I just saw we got something on this scarecrow stroll with the friends of the library. Do you know anything about it? I didn't read into it. Yeah, the, the friends are doing that where they're they're having like scarecrows put up around on the outside. Um, so you're if I, you're a member of an organization, I guess you can get involved in it or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or individuals, I guess. All right. Cool. All right. Great job in the library there, Kyle. All right. Next, myself. Uh, so first, I'd like to thank all the first responders in town. We had Cub Scouts Pack 144 Public Safety Night. And I did ask um, police, the first aid squad, fire company one, fire company two to stop by. Uh, and it's all about educating the Cub Scouts about, you know, what these guys do. And, and the great thing about it is not only are these people that have, you know, their toys out. I mean, you've got the police car, the fire trucks and the ambulance and all the other cool stuff. I mean, it's cool for me. Um, but the kids understand that these people are the people that are your friends you see them they're your your baseball coaches your soccer coaches your uh pack leaders den leaders they are all around you you see them at uh, quick check and so on and so forth so to put a humanized point on that and these are the people that keep us uh, safe uh in town is is very important so i definitely want to reach out i want to thank everybody thank you mr brewer for helping me set that up and i really do appreciate it. that was great uh, another thank you is uh, DPW. Uh, I just got this email. I think we all did. Uh, Adam, I forwarded it to you. And it happened to be about the storm I Isaias. I'm not going to say that correctly. I do uh, apologize. But I'll just pick a couple of things out of it. 
Um, Ralph, a resident, uh, sent us an email thanking uh, everybody, thanking the DPW, and they were talking about a tree uh, came uprooted in the corner of West End at Jocelyn Place. It was blocking West End Ave. And uh, the subsequent performance and repair work by our public works personnel was exemplary and deserves praise. Um, as well as he's thanking the shade tree foreman, Horace Harper, Harper and his crew. And it basically just says, we did a really good job. He really does appreciate it. And that just goes to show as we, as council, as well as the employees, as well as the people that donate their time, uh, we all take ownership in our town, which is why this is such an amazing town. So there you go. And I just want to give credit where credit's due. And that is all I have. So moving on. We're going back to public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized and provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Brewer. Uh, we have a couple of people, Mr. Mayor. I will select them in the order that they raise their hands. So I'm first. Hi, yes. Frank. Welcome. Yeah, Frank Spazzeri, 35 West Frank. Hey, Frank. Uh, hi, all. Hey. I have a question about that plant network. Yes. Uh, I read the uh, resolution, and they're going to provide telephone service. Is that correct? Internet and telephone. Um, when I spoke to the, the gentleman from the company, he explained that the overwhelming and, and significantly overwhelming majority of their customers secure their internet through them. Uh, some also have telephone. They do not offer television at this time. So they have their own internet service? Correct. Okay, they're not gonna use Verizon or somebody else? No, they're, they're, they're gonna run their own fiber on the poles. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate you for uh, getting involved with the other towns for uh, that cable vision stuff. So <laughs> keep pressure on them if we can, that would help. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I agree. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Frank. Okay, Mr. Brewer, next resident. Who else do we have? Peter, welcome. Hi, Peter. Hello, hello. Hi. I just wanted to say um, um, that you are not alone. And would it be possible to advise how big the audience is that you have in the council meeting? And maybe if it is low, one can just grow it over time. Yeah, we always want to get the word out to more people, as many as possible. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we're using Zoom, but I do think it's a good medium. Uh, at the end of the day, we still need to get the word out of what's going on in town. So if you have a, a great idea, we're more than happy to hear it. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could advise how, how, how many people are uh, sort of participating in the beginning of the meeting and maybe the hold down you could mention that mm -hmm. that there is a possibility to listen in and it's important for everybody you are living here in this area yeah i agree we do post it on our website we do push it out on uh, facebook mm -hmm. but we would love to have more engagement <clears throat> okay that's my my con my thank my you view. peter okay anything else that's good peter peter's right october 17th is the hold down this year so I know we discussed it a bit last last meeting, but um, yeah, Peter. I don't know. Can uh, Adam? Can Peter see who else is in? Who else is watching? The participants or no? Just no. us. I'm not sure if participants can see the list of participants or not. I'd be curious to hear from from Peter. No, but I cannot. I cannot. I never so know. There's, whether there's I'm five ad so, five additional people. So Peter, us. if 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 you look at the bottom of your Zoom and it says participants, if you click that. Mm -hmm. Can you I, see panelists, no, I don't. attendees, or no? No, I don't, because I don't see participants as an icon to begin with. So okay. I cannot see the other participants. Okay. Uh, which is a setting in Zoom, you know? You, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a setting in Zoom. Okay, so you guys don't have that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. But oh, I love you. listening, listening into your sessions. <laughs> no? Thank you, Peter. Thank we you. appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Peter. All right, Mr. Brewer. Anybody else? 
Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, there are no other hands raised at this time. I thought we were gonna break our record there and go to three. <laughs> All right, let's see, move right along. Next on the agenda is minutes for approval. We have September 8th, 2020. Is there any comments on the minutes? No. So Lynn, is there a motion to adopt or approve these minutes? I'll make a motion to adopt the minutes from September 8th, 2020. I'll second. second. All in I'll favor? Yep. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Righty. <laughs> is that an aye or an oppose there, Mr. Phil? That's an aye. Unfortunately, I can't click the thing fast enough. I see it. Excellent. Thank you. Next on the agenda is closed session. Mr. Uzdaik, will you please explain the procedures for holding the closed session? Sure, Mayor. Um, when we have live meetings, as, as many of our attendees know, this is the point in our meeting where we ask the public to exit the uh, council chambers because we have a few things to discuss that for legal reasons require that we discuss those without um, opening that to the public. While doing our meetings on Zoom, we try to accomplish the same thing by asking folks that are from the public joining as participants to click off and those of us remain. What I will say is when we finish our closed session tonight, we will be taking no further action. So there is no need for anyone to come back to the meeting to find out what happened because you have now seen everything that will happen at our meeting. So with that in mind, Mayor, I think we're ready to entertain a motion to go into closed session. Thank you, Mr. Uzdaik. As I ask everybody to exit stage left, is there a motion to approve resolution R2020-201 authorizing the township council to meet in executive session to discuss matters of attorney client privilege? I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, no action will be taken following the closed session. At this time, the public portion of the meeting is recessed for closed session. Thank you, everybody. All right. I am now recording. Okay, we are back in public session, Mr. Ustek. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight in executive session, we had three items um, which we discussed. Uh, we met with outside count proposed council to discuss issues of liability um, and, and potential future um, representation in connection with um, uh, our water system and issues revol revol revolving around that. Um, we also discussed a, um, a property application that was heard by the Board of Adjustment and required us to make a determination about whether or not we would be willing to grant an easement to the property owner. And the decision was made to put forth a resolution for a future meeting, which will in fact allow for the um, granting of an easement. And finally, uh, the township manager um, asked for some cons consultation regarding potential sale of township assets and the governing body gave some direction to the township manager in that regard. And that's what we had tonight. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, there being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, meeting adjourned at 8.39 p.m. September 22nd, my birthday. So there you go. Hey, oh, happy yeah. Birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, everyone. See? From an hour ago. Happy birthday, Rye. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time yeah. tonight. Thank good you. Night. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.